Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching my video again. So I'm finally finished with my Harry Potter painting. This one is oil on canvas. And I started it like a couple years ago for my son Joseph. Meant to be a gift for him, a birthday present I think. And it ended up being so much harder than I thought it would be and kind of forced me into a couple years of studying faces because I wasn't able to do what I set out to do. And that was very humbling to come to the end of my ability and to have to admit, I don't know how to do this. I want to roll this, this old footage of the painting as it was coming together. And so you can see, you know, I had the posture weird. I had his head in a weird, weird shape compared to his shoulders and the face, not the right size, looked like a man, you know, instead of a boy and it's all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems. I was having such a tough time. I think everybody comes to that point where you reach the end of your talent and you are faced with a decision to uh, add knowledge to it and, and uh, study, do some hard work if you want to go further or you know, you can always just go back to your comfort zone and do, do what, what you already are confident and good at doing. But for me, I was desiring this skill set. I really want to be able to design characters and make already designed characters however, whenever, wherever I, I want them to be in the scene that I'm imagining. So I've got some uh, helpful tips to offer that I think, that I think uh, you're going to like. So. If you're trying to capture the likeness of a face, here's something I learned is very important, and that is recognizing the bright spots. Light is coming from all over, and the areas that are deepest are also the darkest. And so we're very accustomed to seeing these same set of bright spots on a face. It's forehead, cheeks, nose, and chin. And then whatever little bright spots make up the mouth area as kind of a lower priority. But the shapes that we make the cheeks the bright spots uh, that are there. And then those, those bright spots can be detailed and modified to have a brighter part and a not as bright, a darker part. So when I'm doing the cheeks of Harry Potter, I did those a little differently than the cheeks of Draco Malfoy that I did, you know, real small behind Harry Potter. So let me show you what I mean. I can do it real quick and simple, like with, with this uh, dry erase marker. So I'm just gonna make myself a dark, silhouette of a head will get skinnier as we get down to the chin. It's, it's not real big, you know, this is a good technique for doing small faces. And I don't want to lose all the ink in my <laughs> markers, it take a long time. So let's just make some bright spots on there. We're going to make the forehead. And so we can make a face real quick just by going bright spot on the forehead, bright spot for the cheeks. I'm going to put an angle on them because the eye sockets have this kind of butterfly shape that, that angles up like this. Bright spot for the nose, and then let's put a little a little line for the bridge of the nose and maybe a couple little dots for the nostrils. Then we'll do a bright spot for the chin. Now we've got a face. That's really all you need to make a face, and I could even modify just that set of bright spots to closely match a particular face that, I, that I'm trying to capture. Once I had the tiniest change of color, you know, when, once I had a sudden bright area on the cheek somewhere, then it changed the face. All of a sudden I had something on there. You know, I, I had one little spot and I was like, oh, what is that? Now his, his cheek looks like it's a different shape. Little did I know the extreme difference that it makes, uh, the how light or how dark you make the, the uh, light and shadow on a face because it's all in relationship to itself. How bright I make this lower part compared to this upper part tells you how far out you're, you're you know, when you look at someone, you're creating a three dimensional map uh, of that face. Our facial recognition is three dimensional. So these bright spots can be modified a lot to different shapes. So if I want this person to look like he has more like a snarl, like I did with Malfoy's little face. You know, here, let's, let's kind of do a similar expression, which I'm, I'm not going to be able to capture. I'm not good enough to capture those faces. Again, just doing this on the whiteboard, but I'll just kind of do a generic face. If I take these cheeks and bring them very close to the nose and, and then make sure that where they connect is high, you know, 
like this here. Let's go like this. And then let's make this nose. All, all I need is that triangle shape. Do you see how that makes a snarl right there? Just because these dark lines, it's the height of them. It's the height of those lines in relationship to the rest of the face. So in here, we imagine the mouth. We don't even need to have the mouth in this shadow. We imagine it being there because because my mind is saying human. I know the human has a mouth. So the distance uh, of this little line here in comparison to the mouth and the eyes, where it lies in between the mouth and the eyes, it creates this snarly expression. And so this is just an example of how manipulating these bright spots uh, creates uh, uh, you know, it has a lot of effect. So I can change that effect by lowering where that connects in relationship to, to the mouth and the eyes. So I can bring it down like this. Now it doesn't look so snarly. You know, now, now maybe the, the face is a little bit more relaxed. So we can put a bottom lip. You know, a bottom lip will catch some light because it's a surface that faces up. So I'll put it right above the chin. There's a shadow between the bottom lip and the chin, let's make it a little more level. So that would be the lower lip right here. And then I can make the upper lip just the same by putting light above it. So the upper lip is a downward facing surface. I'll keep it dark, but I'll put a little bit of light right in there. Just, it's just a dot, that's all it is, it's a dot. And that's enough to just suggest a, a shape that's under the nose a, a, where the light is, is, is touching it. And this creates Putting the light in that particular area now creates a wide lip, you know, a lip that's like, the, here's a wide lip. I don't know the right word to describe this, so I'm just going to draw it. Here's a lip you can do with 11 lines. Watch. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to do the same set of lines matching this, but more level. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Nine, ten, eleven. So just these 11 straight lines can be modified to, to any combination to make any set of lips, really. I think of any curved line as, a, as uh, a rounded connection of straight lines. You know, take, just defining it with straight lines and, and then, and then uh, turning that into a more organic curve. So by putting that light right there, it kind of looks like this section of the lip is wider on, on this person. So these are the bright spots again. Now I'm just defining them as circles. Forehead, okay, cheek, cheek, nose. Here, let's do the nose as a triangle. Nose, and then uh, lower, lower lip, and then uh, chin. Okay, so now we can, <laughs> we can kind of see a face in there if we're looking for it, right? So this is not the same face as this circle, and now we're gonna do cheek, cheek, and we're gonna do nose right here, and then we're gonna do lower lip, and then we're gonna do chin. Not the same face, two very different faces. And so it's important to examine the relationship that you see in, in the person that you're trying to capture in, in order to, to accurately accurately get their, their character. So here, let's draw the, the outline of a person's head around this. You know, we've got jaw, cheeks, we've got eyes right in here. You know, let's go up over, over and up like this. Then let's put the top lip in here. See, now it's starting to look like a, no a little more normal. It's still a pretty weird looking face, but you get the point. So bright spots first. I think that's first priority. And that was exactly what I did uh, the more I messed with the painting, the more it started to uh, come clear to me that, hey, every time I brighten this spot, it changes the 3D shape of, of his face. And then, and then I saw that I was, you know, like other things making the face the wrong size, and I, and I had to correct that. So, so now let me go over some of the lines, you know, drawing the eyelashes, eyelids, things that are, are sharper lines on the face and, and a good way to get those in a believable uh, looking place from the start. And this can just be memorized so that you don't have to refigure it out every time you're drawing or painting somebody. So you can do eyes like this. Watch this set of eyes. I go up and over, over and up. That's an eye. So let's go up and over and over and up. And I'm just very accustomed to, to a distance like this. It's about one eye in between. You know, I didn't... I, I'm not the first person to identify that by a long shot. 
uh, but this is helpful to imagine just one eye in between. Also, another helpful thing is to understand that there's about four, and you know, on on a person, uh, uh, maybe like a, a a normal, not not real old, not real young person. It's normal to see four eye distance, the circle iris part. Uh, if I can fit four of those, one, two, three, four, I can fit about four. So this is a very common spacing of eyes. And so if you have a norm established in your memory, I'm like, <laughs> I think with my hands, I'm like, somehow there's the object of my memory in my hand and I'm showing it to you when I do this. <laughs> I have uh, norms in my memory that help me to very quickly compare what I'm looking at to that norm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's very valuable to memorize the parts. So now you do it this method, you know, you go up, over, over, up. I can make any eye with that pattern. There's an eyelid on the top, there's an eyelid on the bottom. The top one goes along the eye, the bottom one slopes down. This is on just about every eye. If it's an Asian person, you'll hardly see it on the top, but you'll probably still see something there. And then the corner of the eye, uh, if it's a, like, you know, white, white person like me, or, uh, uh, with deep eye sockets, you're going to see a lot of corner. You're going to see a lot of this eye corner right here. But uh, if it's, uh, a, a, there's other ethnicities. Also, Asian, Asian people hardly have any corners. So that's a good contrast to see how, how diverse eyes can be as comparing an eye like mine with an eye like someone from China. You'll see kind of the extreme ends of the spectrum and then every other eye I've ever seen kind of fits in in the middle of those somewhere. So we've got eyes, then we do eyebrows. So let's do two lines. The peak of the eyebrow is right above this outer edge of the iris here. So I can do the eyebrow and then I'll do the nose. I can do a nose with six lines. One, two, okay, and then we're gonna go three, four, five, six. Six lines, I can make any nose. So that's kind of a round, a round nose. Let's do a different kind of nose. Let's go one, two, three, four, real close to the middle this time. It's gonna give me a more pointy nose. Five, six. And that was kind of a flat and pointy nose. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a very different shape. Okay, let's try another one. This is kind of fun. Let's do the middle first. One, two, three, four, Five, six. Whoa, that's a huge nose. Okay, let's do another one. Let's go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. So somehow that seems like it could fit on that face. All right, now let's go. 11 lines for the mouth, and I'm gonna take the corner of the mouth to the inside edge of the iris. So that's how wide the mouth is in, then the distance down to the mouth is about half of the distance from the bottom of the nose to the eye. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then we've got a mouth in there. Then let's go an eye out to the edge of the head. Now this is where I got tricked, you know, I or I this is where I had error in my picture. I just didn't make this area big enough for a long time. It took me a long time for this, this to be noticed by me. So I really need a lot of space between the eye and the edge of the skull. And, and so, you know, this, it, it looks wide right now when I do it like this. And I think it's just a really common area to, to have error in is the size of the face in relation to that skull. But watch, we're gonna go uh, a little bit thinner where it goes to the jaw and the jaw is right across from the mouth. So we'll put a mark, a mark, a mark, a mark, and then we'll put the chin about twice this distance right here. And in a minute, I'll turn this into a girl. Okay, so that, so that you see the difference if you're trying to do a feminine face versus, versus masculine face. So I go about twice the height of this, the bottom of the nose to the uh, mouth. Let's go twice that distance to the chin approximately. And then we want to go the same distance from eye to chin. We want to go at least that distance from eye to the top of the heads. So I'm going to make sure that I go at least this high to get to the top of the head. And then I've got the edge right there. So I'll come down and connect to the jaw. And then I'll come down and go to the chin. And then go back up to this jaw. And then I've got a very believable looking 
head structure. And I, I just missed that for so long and it was such a big difference when I finally got that to be more, more accurate on my Harry Potter. And then my, I started to feel like I, I know how to paint again. <laughs> then that face started looking normal. So this, the forehead, you know, every time I teach someone this, they, they uh, are surprised at the, the giant size of the forehead. But once you get hair on top of this that comes out further, because hair grows off of the head, so it's going to come out like right here. And then there's going to be ears under that hair. They're going to come out to here. And then the ears are about, you know, bottom of the nose to bottom of the, the eyebrow. You know, eyebrow to, to nose is, is about a, a good approximation for where to put the ears. But I'm, I'm sure that it can vary depending on the size of a person's ears. So let's put the hair coming over the tops of the ears. Let's go up here and make sure that we show some, some of the temple as, as it starts to slope inward and then go across here. Now I might make him having, having hair that hangs down in the front like this. You know, or I can, or I can make the hair going back, show a lot more of the forehead, you know, just let's make the hair going this direction like it's combed back now here you know whatever you want to do but but uh, getting the size of that head first I think is very helpful in having a natural looking face all right so then if I want to turn this into a girl that's pretty simple all I have to do is shrink all of the face bones so that could be done with my bright spots and with how big I make the boundary so Let's take this jaw and erase it. Let's erase this chin. Let's just bring everything in. So on a girl, they just don't grow as big of a skull, you know? And so the eyes are a little bigger in, in relationship to the, the head. So I've made everything closer together now, and then I'm gonna make the chin higher. So I know that, you know, this, this maybe doesn't look so feminine, but if I put some, if I put some girly looking hair on this, you know, to really, really sell it, you know, and then make the neck skinny, then this looks a lot more like, more like a girl now. Here, let's do some kind of a girly hairstyle on here. Getting the, getting the look of a boy versus girl is, is very much in just the size of these lines. That's really like, I think 90% of the difference is just in where you put these lines. Okay, so let me bring them back out. Let's see if we can keep the long hair and make this look like now just a boy that's got this kind of haircut. Okay, we've got a bigger chin. It immediately starts to look more masculine because this is what we're used to seeing. So in your drawing, you know, if you, if you are struggling with getting a portrait of a girl to look girly, then it may be the size of your jaw and skull by the eyes to everything. This whole size of this, you shrink that down, that may be the issue. And then of course the neck, likewise you can see I made a very masculine neck by widening it, putting, putting a lot more mass on that. And so now it just looks like a boy with, with this kind of, kind of girly-ish haircut. You know, I'm sorry, if you're a boy with that haircut, I'm sorry that I called it girly. You know, I, I got asked if I was a girl a lot, <laughs> a time or two when I was younger because I had a, because I had a mullet, you know. <laughs> I think those were definitely the, the biggest difference makers. I always say two things telling the same story makes it a lot more believable. And so I got the bright spots. Uh, fixed and then I also got got those lines in ordinary places and then it was just small adjustments you know just just a long time of looking at photos doing small adjustments looking at photos doing small adjustments I had set out in the beginning to show that if you learn the parts then you could use those parts to create them at any angle and so this painting was to be my proof. I feel like what I really proved in the end is that that is very hard to do. And it did prove to me how valuable understanding of the parts and how they're normally placed can be. And particular combinations, like I just showed you with the bright spots and with those lines, I, I just wasn't aware of them. I overlooked them and it was dramatically affecting my picture. And, 
And so I hope that this is helpful to you. I, I found it to be very transforming to my work. Hey, listen, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, I appreciate it very much. It's always a big honor for me to be able to show off for you in my next video. I wanna let you know that I also sell instructional videos on my website, muraljoe.com. I also have an Instagram page, so you can uh, see Mural Joe on Instagram. It's, it's still taken me a little bit to get used to carrying around, as I carried around a flip phone for a long time, but but I'm trying to, trying to do a better job of keeping people on Instagram updated too on what's going on. So you can look at those different platforms. Uh, I'll hope to see you in my next video. Thanks.